Okay, I'm back. I just can't sleep. And I was just thinking about life in general. And all the crazy shit that's going on with the trials and, and the war. And, oh, there's so much sadness. And, of course, I torture myself with these books about those that have been falsely accused of something and had done jail time, you know. This one guy did 18 years and Avery, the Avery, you know, case. And at first I remember seeing that documentary and thinking he was guilty, both of them. I thought, well, there's human remains in the fire pit and there was a key found in the trailer and why was her car found there you know all of this was going on in my mind and <sighs> because of all that's gone on the last five years I kind of forgot about that documentary but I remember just going oh yeah he did it he was he had gone to jail for 18 years for rape which he didn't commit he didn't commit that rape so i thought well in his mind he probably was like you know what i deserve to rape some rape and kill someone for all the time i did i don't know i don't know why i thought that i know that sounds crazy but i was looking at the evidence i was like well they do have you know human bones in the fire and the car and blah 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 and I felt like they had, they had some good evidence, but now I'm doing the audiobook, listening to it on the case, and um, it's so fucking sad. That poor kid, he should not be in prison. He didn't even know what he was being asked. He's mentally challenged, so um, it's just, ugh. Yeah, I'm watching, um, listening to Cold Kill by Jack Olson. And it's just a really sad thing. It made me really upset. I just thought, before that I had listened to another book, audiobook. I don't know why I'm suddenly into audiobooks. It's just easy around the eyes. You know? <laughs> it's like you get staring at a Kindle and you're just like, ugh. Uh, my eyes are horrible as it is. So this other case, um, same type of situation where this poor man was locked up for, I think it was 13 years. It was in uh, New Orleans. I'm sure some of you have heard about that case. I'll just put the name of him in the... Um, description because I can't even think right now because it's almost four in the morning and I can't sleep because I'm upset <laughs> about just everything you know I was reading about the Kardashians I don't know how I even came across the article but it was talking about how they get half a million dollars each for each episode and it's like how why what you know like you know, I, I have actor friends that work their asses off and they're extremely talented and they're lucky to maybe get like 30000 an episode, you know, if they're on a show, if they get lucky enough to book a show. But these bitches, they're, uh-uh, no, what the hell is going on? And I don't know why, but when I was younger, everything felt good and, and fair, you know, I felt like I lived in a fair society and... I felt hopeful and I don't know if it's because I didn't see the bad. I, did, I wasn't looking at, looking for it, but I just know that everything was light and beautiful and I loved life in general. But now I feel so weighed down by so much bullshit and I don't really want to be a part of the world. You know, this world, the world that it is now. I know, you know, a lot of my viewers, the few of my viewers, I should say, I don't have that many and that's fine. I am so okay with that. I'm, I'm just so glad that I get to sit here and talk 
you know, to, to talk about the things that are out there. So, what's this? Okay. There was something about Chelsea Handler and uh, Joe Coy. I like that they're together, you know, but I feel like they're overdoing it. They're just, they want everyone to know they're together <laughs> and in love. And so they just keep going, boom, boom, hi, hi, we're here, we're together. And it's like, yeah, we know, we get it. You, know, you guys are dating now, great. And they are, they're a cute couple, but I just, I feel like they're overdoing it. And I don't know why. What's, what's the problem? Okay, so these two men that I've, you know, been listening to their stories and they did nothing to deserve this, really. I think both of them dabbled in crime at one point in their lives and both of them weren't wealthy and they were easy targets. And so I think that's how our society is and how it's always been. If you're um, either uneducated and live in a poor part of town and you sell some weed and get busted and you have a record, even if it's bullshit, you know, even if it's a bullshit record, um, you're just fucked, you know? Only the Kardashians could survive. Only Elon Musk, people like that, those motherfuckers <laughs> seem to be thriving and so many of us are struggling and it just makes me sad and then when I see people getting locked up for so many years for something they didn't do and thank God there's people out there that the Innocence Project I love that organization but thank God there's people like that that went out of their way to kind of look into it and find out what really happened and then get them the fuck out but this case this this man from New Orleans Harry Connick Jr.'s dad is the one of the prosecutors or the DA or what what have you. Um, yeah, he was a piece of shit, I guess. It's, you know, the sins of the father, you know. But it's really sad because he ended up dying, I think it was five years later, he died at 51, 52 of cancer. And I just thought, what the, you know, it's like he had it hard enough. I feel like some people are just so burdened in life and so many horrible things happen to them. And other people like the fucking Kardashians do a, you know, she does a sex tape and it's like, boom, everything just is handed to her on a silver fucking platter. And I don't understand it. The disparity between the two. Um, I don't know if sometimes I think suffering's so purifying and, um, it makes you appreciate life so much more. And so I think it's sometimes a blessing. And I can't remember what movie it was, but I remember a character saying that to another character, like, oh, I'm so jealous that you're going through the suffering. You know, you're so lucky. And I'm thinking, what a fucked up thing to say to someone. But yeah, I think... Um, if anyone knows of that movie, let me know. But I can't remember what it was even about. But somebody was suffering, going through some shit. And then somebody was like, oh, you're so lucky that you're going through this, you know. But it does. It has a refining quality to it. And it makes you a better person. And definitely you have more wisdom and empathy. And I don't think the Kardashians have any of that. You know, I don't think they really give a shit about anyone but themselves. And I don't know. So it's like a trade-off, you know. But would I want to be locked up for 18 years for a crime that I didn't commit? Only to be put back in for another crime that I did not commit? Fuck no. But sometimes with my anxiety, my you know, I get depressed. And now I have like these, the body aches and what have you not aches, I'm in pain, you know, a lot of the time because of a car accident that I was in a long time ago. I just think, is it fucking worth it? Is it all worth it? You know, no, I don't want to kill myself. Absolutely not. I don't believe in that. Uh, I've had a few friends commit suicide and it's just, no, it's not okay. And I wish I could have been there more for the for them <sighs> but
but um, is being out, like I said at the beginning before I went off on a tangent, is it really worth being out in the world? Is it worth it? I just, I don't think it is anymore. I'm so grateful that when I was younger, I did all of the things I wanted to do. You know, I traveled, I had fun, I was fearless. I was, I was a fighter. I didn't put up with anyone's shit. And I was blessed in so many ways. Maybe not with my family. I think the older I get, the more I realize how neglected I was and how little they gave a shit. You know, it was all about my sister. It was all about Sandy. And so whatever happened to me didn't really matter. I was the accident baby. I was the oopsie. And then, I don't know. I don't know why they just didn't abort me or give me it for adoption. I know that it was harder to do back then. You know, you can't just be pregnant and then out of nowhere go, oh, you know, we gave it, we gave her away. You know, it wasn't like the proper thing to do. Or we had, I had an abortion. Now it's coming up again where, you know, people are talking about it, but I think sometimes you have to have one if you can't give that child the life it deserves. And I, I grew up in a really, you know, nice house, like upper class, nice, you know, my dad drove a nice car. We, we had nice things. You know, my sister had a pony. Who has ponies? You know, who's a ballerina? Her, my sister, who's in the theater like my sister was, where we would go to New York every year. Um, once a year we would go to New York because either we were going to a Broadway show or my sister was auditioning or performing. It was kind of like that, you know, where, but it was for everyone but me. You know, I realize that now the life that my sisters had and my brother had was different than mine. He was in a motocross and so he got all these bikes and my dad would take video of him and they would travel throughout the country for him to um, compete. And, of course, my sister was a ballerina, but she also competed um, with horses. And all three, all three of them had great lives. <laughs> Me, I was abandoned at 12. My father shut down emotionally. He couldn't handle it. And he worked all of the time, probably because he couldn't handle it. So I was just left alone. My friends love coming to my house because there was never any grown-ups around and food, never any food except, you know, candy, junk food. And so I just did whatever the fuck I wanted. And there's a part of me that's so grateful for that because by the time I was at that age where I could have been at the Playboy Mansion, I had already been there, done that. So I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing. I had to grow up really fast. But I'm so thankful for so many of the things that I experienced in life. And I don't care if I experience any more. And not because I want to die. Because I don't. And I'm not going to kill myself. No fucking way. But I just want to write. I just want to sit around writing, finishing my books. Finally getting the masters, which I'm so fucking close. It's crazy. But then all this pain came about and I can't sleep at night because I'm in pain. I don't have the proper bed for it. I need, I'm working on that. That's coming. But I just, I don't care about like what other people focus on going shopping and going on vacations and you know, all of that bullshit that doesn't really matter in the end. And yeah, you know, some people, that's what gets them off and that's what makes them happy. That's great. But for me, it just seems wasteful. Um, and I think I've done all I wanted to do already. And yeah, okay, there's a few things on my list, my bucket list. But on the most part, because I've been reading about people who actually suffered, like for real, went through some shit and... One of them got um, got rewarded a huge settlement. And instead of going off and traveling the world and buying fancy things, he knew what life was really about. He really had no choice but to go inwards, you know, to survive. 
in prison for a crime that he did not commit. And he got out and he dedicated his time before he died at the age of 51 or what have you to helping other people. And I just, isn't that what life's about? So for me, the Kardashians disgust me on every level. Elon Musk, disgusting. The super rich are disgusting. They give nothing back. They don't pay their fair share in taxes. And the people that think they're better than you because they took a trip. I'm so sick of seeing people's bullshit, hyped up trips, you know, vacation spots. Oh, I went to the Bahamas. It's like, good for you. There's people starving and living in tents by the beach. You know what I mean? It's, it's all for show too. It's not authentic. For the pictures, it looks amazing. You're like, oh, look at me and, you know, my hubby who secretively they hate. They're at this fancy spa or whatever, retreat. I don't know. But I'm just in that mood right now where I'm just not having it. And then I see, you know, the, the pettiness of China, Black China, suing for money that she could have made. Not money that she made. She didn't work for shit. And the stupid fucking Kardashians. I'm like, oh, fuck off. And then Amber Heard. It's like, you know what? He gave you a huge divorce settlement. He said, here, I'm going to make sure you're going to be okay. I just don't think we can work this out. And instead of moving on with her life and taking that money and realizing that she got a, not, she wasn't even, what was a year? I think they were married like a year. Take that money, do something good with it, make your life better. But instead she had to drag his name through the mud, knowing it would ruin his career. Just a bitter, evil fucking cunt. Sorry. Yes, I said it. She is horrible. And, and now look at them. They're in court. I am all team Johnny because he didn't go and badmouth her. You know, he could have so easily talked about how she threw bottles at him and shit on his bed and all that. He could have talked a lot of shit, but he didn't. He kept quiet. She's the one that just wanted that attention. And so she had to do an article talking about all, you know, how horrible her life was and she was abused and said such untruths, you know, that can't be validated by anybody. And so what a spoiled little bitch. Like I said, people are starving. People are living in tents. There's so much suffering in this world and people are getting falsely accused and put in jail and all of that. And yes, yeah, ironic because, you know, Kim Kardashian helped somebody get released from jail. And this is why she did it. I already know why she did it. Trump was getting a lot of attention every day, all day, 24 seven. And he still is getting attention. It's unfortunate. And Kanye decides that he needs that attention too. So he wants to go hang out with, you know, Trump and Kim wasn't invited. So she had to do something to get that attention back on her. It has to be on her. So it wasn't like she freed a, 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 a hundred women or two women even she freed one woman, which was really cool of her, you know, because a lot of people were like, look, this is what you should do. Then she gets to go to the White House in the Oval Office, takes a picture, and then she acts like she's going to be a lawyer, but she's not. She's not a lawyer. She's not even really studying, I don't think. And if she is, I don't know. But all I know is that she's fucking phony and she didn't do it for the right reasons. So... Yeah, if I had that kind of influence like she has, I would be freeing up everyone. I would be opening up cases, closed cases, doing all of that. All right, so this is my late night rant in bed with, not talking about anything specific, <laughs> talking about life and how fucked up it is on the most part. Yeah, some people have beautiful lives. So beautiful that I'm convinced that heaven and hell are right here on earth. And the in-between, you know, purgatory. It's all right here. We don't have to go off anywhere. Maybe we're already here. I don't know. I feel like I'm more in purgatory. I don't feel like it's like hell. But I know some people are living in hell, you know? And it's not, it's not okay. You know, it's sad. And then some people just, but is that, is that heaven? 
the life that they, you know, they live, but, you know, that Hugh Hefner lived, or he got away with every fucking thing. Or Elon Musk, who, he came from a wealthy family. You know, they're trying to dispute that and say, no, no, he didn't, blah, blah, blah. But the truth is, he did. He had an advantage. Um, a lot of people do. And so, is that really heaven? Because will they ever really be happy? Can they ever have enough, ever? Is a half a million an episode enough? I don't think so. I don't think there's going to be enough burka bags and Gucci and all of that for to, to satiate them. I don't think so. And so maybe that's not heaven. Maybe that's hell. You know? I don't know. Everything's all twisted. So that's the way I feel right now. I'll probably feel differently, differently tomorrow. But this audiobook has got me all fucked up. For a good reason, though, it forces you to kind of figure things out for yourself, you know, look inside of yourself and figure out who you are, what's important to you, what's bullshit and what's not, who you want in your life, who you don't want in your life, and I'm not impressed by material things. I had this guy recently try to court me in his own weird, fucked up way on Facebook and he was showing me him on a yacht and you know living large or what have you and bragging about all the money he has and it seemed pathetic it was such a turn off and I'm not even on the market I don't want to be on the market I'm over the market I'm just hanging chilling I just don't give a fuck right now. I'm, I'm going through some shit. And so I'm happy with what I have, who I have in my life. I'm grateful for. But yeah, this guy was just, you know, on a freaking yacht thinking he was all that, thinking that's what's important. And if you go on dating site, sites, which I did maybe five, six years ago, that I really was the last time I was, it was done. But um, it was all about bragging about what they have not who they are as a person, because that's something you have to get to know. But what's important in this world is all twisted. And I just don't feel like I fit in anymore. You know, there's nowhere for me to, to fit. And I think that's why I prefer to stay home and just work on myself and my writing and my life and remembering the good and talking about the bad because it could help other people. You know, there's all these stories coming up. And nobody's happy with themselves, you know? Everybody has to have surgery and wear hair extensions and fake lashes and spray tans and all of that. And I just, it's exhausting to watch. I look at my, some friends from high school and I'm thinking, I don't even recognize you. It doesn't even look like you. And you were so beautiful before. Why did you do that? And then I look at the Kardashians and I think about that, where it all kind of started. It's, it's really disgusting. I think we need to, um, wait, Haley barely goes grunge. I don't really give a fuck. Oh yeah. Then I was watching this interview with Megan Fox. She thinks she made Machine Gun Kelly by manifesting him when she was four. Yet, what the fuck is going on with her? She's always been a little like, Looney Tooney a little bit, you know, she would talk about, um, they, they had to move because, um, her son that wasn't born yet told her to, or something to that effect. I rarely ever watch interviews with her because I just, she doesn't interest me. She's kind of, she's boring. She doesn't have that like exuberant personality and she's not really smart or interesting, but she's beautiful. She's dropped dead gorgeous and she's obviously spiritual, but in a really weird, fucked up way. And so this interview was the weirdest scene I've seen in a very long time. And she looked like a Kardashian, you know, because she's hanging out with them now. She had these really long, like, claws, you know, like, Arrgh. they all do. All the Kardashians have those claws. And not only them, but everyone's copying them now. So everyone's, whatever, thank God for voice to text. But yeah, me, no, old school. I'm going, oh, I go old school. And she had like this 
like tons of makeup on, which she doesn't even need. You know, she really is. She's had a lot of surgery too, and she did not need it. But she was just talking crazy. I've never heard anything like that. You have to check it out. Go look up the, the newest Megan Fox interview. I think it was on, let me look and see where it's at. <laughs> see, I'm just everywhere. I'm everywhere right now. Um, yeah, I don't know. The truth is I don't fucking know. I just looked for it and I just accidentally pressed on the wrong thing. So, okay. Yeah. She just was talking crazy. And that's another thing that's really in is <laughs> the crazier, the better. I feel like anything to get attention, anything like her and Machine Gun Kelly are so freaking annoying at this point. At first I was rooting for her because I was like, you know what? She has been hiding. She said, she admitted, you know, I was overwhelmed by this is what pissed me off too. It didn't piss me off, but kind of annoyed me. She was like, you know, when you're so famous, you know, and you're, you're so much attention for your sexuality and your beauty, you know, it's, 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 um, traumatizing. And I was like, okay, so you're upset because you're, you're famous and you're, people think you're sexy and beautiful and, um, fuck you. <laughs> That's the way I felt like just fuck you. Uh, you know who, how many people would love to have that life? I would hate it. That would suck. I can't even imagine everywhere you go, everyone's like, ooh, taking pictures. But she knew what she was getting into in that business. You know what I mean? She wanted it. She wanted to be famous. She sexualizes herself. I don't believe anyone could do anything without your consent. And just like people come at me about the Playboy, um, the girls at the Playboy, well, yeah, they knew what they they all admit, they knew what they were getting into, but nobody deserves to be drugged and raped, you know? But as far as, you know, sexualizing themselves, yeah, I did it. A lot of people do it. It's, I think sometimes men make women feel that it's all they have to offer. And so once you learn otherwise, you continue to do that, but with Megan, she complained about it a lot and said, oh, you know, I've been over-sexualized and everyone always looks at me as a sex symbol and blah, blah, blah. And it's like, well, have you looked at yourself in the mirror and what you're wearing and what you're doing? I'm not saying she deserves to be raped. You know what I mean? Like, you know, some people are like, well, what were you wearing? That doesn't matter. What matters is that she's presenting herself a certain way to, um, to everyone. And then she complains about it. She complains about fame and money, power, things that most people would give anything for, you know? So I don't want to hear it. I really don't. And while she's saying this, her boobs are hanging out of her shirt and she's showing her belly and she's got tons of makeup on and, and Kim Kardashian hair and, you know, Chloe claws. And I'm just like, who the fuck are you? And you don't you can't manifest someone. And she thinks it's spiritual to kind of share each other's blood. Yeah, super, super spiritual. It's fucking crazy is what it is. I've never even knew who Machine Gun Kelly was before her. And, um, oh, oh, and she was like, oh my God, you know, I didn't even know if I wanted to take the role, but it was like, he didn't know either. And like, we both were like oh, you know what? I just have to do this. I don't know why, but I have to take this role. And then once when we, when I knew it was him that was going to play my love interest, I thought, not lovish. I think, I don't even know. I didn't watch the fucking movie, but she was going to have like some sort of sexy scene with him. She's like, oh my God, we're going to get in a lot of trouble. I'm thinking, okay, weren't you married with kids at the time? I mean, she was, don't get me wrong. I, Brian Green. I have, you know, some experience with that. He did not deserve to get cheated on. You know, they were together for a really, really long time. They have three kids. So she did this while she was married. She acts like, you know, they were like separated. But no, she just went off to go do a movie. And that's when it happened. That's not separating. It's cheating on your husband. 
So we're supposed to be like, all, oh, it's a love story. It's beautiful. It's a beautiful love story. No, you're a freaking cheater is what you are. And go drink some more blood, bitch. You know, <laughs> I don't like her. Okay. That's, that's my rant. 30 minutes. And I've covered so much. Okay. I talked about Megan, which kind of came out of nowhere, but I did watch some of her interview and I can't tell you about the rest because I had to turn it off. But she was talking crazy. China. Amber Heard. Kardashians, of course. Two men that were falsely accused of something they didn't do and spent years and years and years of their lives in jail. Very sad. Elon. Am I in purgatory? Um, do I want to be a part of this fucked up world? And do I care about a man on a yacht with a cocktail? No, I don't. <laughs> there you go. All right, everyone, I'm finally going to try to go to bed, but I'm afraid of waking up in pain. So we'll see. Wish me luck.